Hello everybody and welcome, I'm Count Christo and this is the Pax Americana campaign in Hearts of Iron 3. Uh, you may be confused by the fact this is part called part 1, there is a part before this if you want to see all the setup of how we created the wonderful world that I'm about to explain to you. Uh, we're going to be playing, as you can obviously tell, as the United States of America, and uh, I have a particular plan and a particular backstory to the strange scenario the United States finds itself in. Uh, we have, we are currently living in the mo in a ridiculously isolationist America, so isolationist that if we look here, uh, we have Patton, <laughs> Major General Patton, currently commanding this uh, this infantry division. And Hodge, Major General Hodge, <laughs> commanding this one. And those are the entire extent of our land units. These two infantry divisions are all of the land units we have in the entire world. <laughs> uh, we do, however, have a rather large uh, 350 industrial capacity. Not bad at all. Uh, mostly because the area around Washington, D.C. has gone through some ridiculous industrialization. Uh, we have a relatively small military uh, fleet, sorry, the Pacific fleet here, made up of carriers, battleships, and destroyers, and the Atlantic fleet, which is exactly the same. Uh, I don't know if I should be, uh, I think I should have built light cruisers, but anyway, let's talk a bit more about the, the setup before we get into the nitty gritty. Uh, we're going to play as the United States, and we're going to see what we can do to remain entirely neutral in World War II. And what I mean by neutral is we're going to be at war with everyone. <laughs> we're going to declare war on the Axis, and the Allies, and the Comintern, and see what we can do to just generally shake things up. Uh, Hoi 3 is slightly geared to try and not let you do that. Uh, they want you to drift towards either the Allies, the Comintern, or the Axis. So we're gonna, just going to, you know, beat the system, essentially. That's the plan, at least. Uh, what else? Right, in terms of technology, I've gone through and set everything up. If you want a detailed breakdown of how all that went, uh, you can go and check part zero. But one thing I have got I want to mention is we have loads of advanced computers over here in the US. We've got uh, 44 and uh, 41, respectively, mechanical computing machines and electronic computing machines. So our research capacity is going to be huge. And yes, we're going to see what we can do to take over the world. Uh, now, in this game, there's a mechanic called neutrality. I am, by the way, going to do my best to explain the game mechanics as I go along. Uh, I don't intend this to be exactly a tutorial series, but I'm going to explain what I'm doing and why I'm doing it as I go along. So if you haven't seen this game before, hopefully I should, uh, I should have you covered. We have a certain level of neutrality, 71. I set it to as low as you possibly could in the custom game setup thing. Uh, when we have 71 neutrality, that means we can declare war on a nation which has a threat value of 71 or more to us. It might have to be greater than 71, but we don't really need to split hairs. Uh, that means if, say, Germany, uh, just to pick a random example, had a threat level to us of 72, we could declare war on Germany. Essentially, the neutrality is uh, how threatened your people need to feel before they're willing to go to war. So if, for example, uh, Germany takes over all of France, they're going to get real threatening. And our people are going to be like, well, I mean, maybe we should consider going over there and showing those krauts what's what. And if the Japanese were to annex lots of China, then their threat relative to us would go up a lot. And we'd be uh, much better able to declare war on them. We start with very high neutrality. It's a base 100 in the United States. I believe we have some decisions that can help lower it. It's not under... Where are they? Here they are. So, stab in the back. If Italy goes to war with the United Kingdom, we get uh, the love of freedom, which gives us leadership and our industrial capacity. Industrial capacity, if you're not familiar with Hoi 3, is uh, basically just factories. And there are no specified military, civilian, or... Uh, naval factories in Hoi 3, it's all just industrial capacity. You can see, build, use the same factory to build anything. Uh, unlimited national emergency. Right, so the UK surrender progress at least 10%, or Yugoslavia has been conquered, and France must be a member of the Axis or not control Paris. And then we can do unlimited national emergency, lose another 5 neutrality. The day of infamy. If we're at war, we lose 50 neutrality and six unit, gain six unity, gain 500 manpower, and we get loads more manpower for what well, looks like three years. Wow, that's very powerful. Uh, gearing up for war. If Germany's at war with the United Kingdom, or we're at war, we can lose five neutrality, and we lose the New Deal, 
What is the New Deal? There it is. New Deal. National Manpower Modifier, minus 40%. That's pretty bad. And Consumer Goods During Peacetime, plus 25%. Uh, manpower in Hoi 3 is unlike Hoi 4 in that you gain it over time uh, and then spend it. You don't just have a kind of big pool that you use. It's much more something that you slowly gain and use. So you can think of manpower a bit more like uh, kind of men who've received basic training rather than just everyone who's available to you, I think. So what you need once you have the manpower is not really to train men but to provide them with the tools that they need to use to, uh, to actually get out there and fight. So we have the New Deal, which is an economic policy, I think, in the US, that tried to help end the, the uh, Depression. We have some laws that we can enact. But yeah, so the plan is, we're going to use our big industrial capacity to build up quite slowly, and we're going to go to war with Mexico, and that kind of thing. And if the Allies get in our way, we'll take over Canada. Uh, but we probably won't be able to do that until Japan declares war on us. So we're likely to be relatively stagnant until Japan declares war on us. If we get the opportunity to declare war on Germany, if they get threatening enough, I will absolutely do that. Uh, but I'm not going to join the Allies. If the game tries to force me to join the Allies, uh, I may try and console my way out of it. I'll try and use cheats to make sure we can stay independent, because I want it to be an independent US campaign. Seems fun to me. Okay, let's get started. Uh, more efficient laws. <clears throat> right, so... We're currently... 48% social liberal, 39% social conservative. I don't think this matters a great deal, really, except, I mean, we would like to, uh, like, censor the press, maybe. For a war, we can censor the press. You have to not be a democracy in order to get state press. That's pretty tricky to do. And we'd have to be communist or the fascist, the National Socialist German American Bund Party in order to go to propaganda press. So that's probably not going to happen. Uh, what are the more efficient laws that we can enact? Specialist training, eh? Conscription laws. That's not a conscription law. That's a training law. We have advanced training right now, which means they recruit slower, but they have higher starting experience. I think it's a good idea to go all the way up to specialist training, probably. Yeah. Makes it 10% slower, but their you know, 10 starting experience is quite a big deal. Uh, okay. So we can't replace these guys. He has threat resistance, so we don't like him. Hopefully we can replace him. But there are no other candidates, so it seems unlikely. We have a susceptibility to axe this guy from this social liberal. Are we... Yeah, we're social liberal, right. So we might want to get rid of some of these social democrats. Although he does give resources, that's pretty good. Chemical engineering, decay. Supply, 20% is pretty good. And he is a... Uh, I can't hover here. Really? Why not? That's silly. Well, I think we should get this guy. Supply is 20% is pretty good. Crime fighter, more counter espionage. Not that fussed about counter espionage, but that's the only option. Land intel. Sure, that seems valuable. Uh, you're a social liberal, so we'd like to fire you. Uh, defend reinforcement chance. That seems good, actually. We were having problems with reinforcement chance in the uh, in the previous campaign. Armor practical decay or mobile unit. Yeah, armor seems fine. Naval base efficiency is very useful for... Uh, that's basically the amount of supplies you can use you can move, and the amount of ships you can repair, I think, in naval bases. Uh, Alright, so let's set up the research that we want to start with. Um, ideally, you don't want to go ahead of time too much. Do we want to build heavy tanks? I don't know that we do. We are going to do our best to kind of take over South America, ideally. Pax Americana and all that. <laughs> uh, Arctic warfare treatment, attrition. Could be good. Lowering our attrition in the uh, in the Arctic areas. It's not a great deal. We can really research. Marines, I think, will be useful. Let's get some serious land doctrine in the queue as well. We're going to go not much espionage. Not much on diplomacy. Uh, not much on officers. None on officers, in fact. What I'm going to do probably is just pump up the officers just before we go to war. That's usually the strategy I go with. Uh, more chance of counterattacks. More organization on... Anti-air, anti-tank, self-propelled, and artillery. Yeah, on artillery, that seems valuable. Uh, mass assault. More assault. More infantry morale. Seems good. I'm not an expert, so uh, we'll see what we can do. I don't want to spread myself too thin on uh, on all of these things. I think we're not going to go for a huge tank army. We'll have tanks, but we're not going to go really hard into mobile warfare because it's so expensive. Let's get some central planning done. 
Is there any industry you want to do right now, actually? That's a good good thing we should check. Uh, I don't think so. We'll want to do this, but let's do it next year so we're not doing it ahead of time. We will want to be able to build infrastructure. It's very important, but I think for right now, it's not too important. Paratroopers, I don't think, are vital. I was thinking maybe we should just go with tack bombers rather than CAS. I think that, that should be okay. And I was considering whether we should... Oh, I should give up on my theory that we should just go with destroyers, battleships and carriers, and we should just bail out and do some light cruisers as well. I think we probably should. Let's get some light cruiser tech. Um... There's not much else I really want to uh, want to invent right now. We could do some theory. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Some theory. Give me some mechanical. Yeah, it's already doing it. Good. Give me some mechanical engineering. Uh, this decree. So the the way that practical experience works. And let's talk about this for a moment. You get theory. So if we go to uh, yeah, here it is. So here's our theory, right? So for land, you have a certain amount of infantry theory and a certain amount of infantry practical. Infantry theory, I think, I think, infantry theory is gained when you deploy infantry. Infantry practical is gained when infantry are in combat. Uh, and the more you have of these two, the faster you can deploy infantry. So if we were to go to production right now, this is the wrong production screen. Why is the production screen not? Oh no, wait. Yeah, this is the wrong production screen. The large UI mod is working for everything except the most important thing, which is the production screen. Oh no! I'll have to look into that between this episode and the next. Maybe it's not working for the other things. I'm just looking at it wrong. Yeah, it's not. Ah! That's frustrating. Alright, I'll have to go and look at that between episodes. Anyway, uh, if we were to produce right now this basic infantry division here, right? That would give us, as you can see, three lots, because there's three infantry lots, of 0.2 infantry practical. And right now, infantry practical reduces building cost and time by 53.5%. So if we look over, having six infantry theory reduces building and one infantry practical, reduces it by 53%. That's pretty freaking good. If we can get that even higher, then we could start banging out infantry at ludicrous speeds. I'm currently building the USS Yorktown. Uh, yeah, I think we might as well let that finish since it's already half done. Uh, we really don't have much industrial capacity to speak of right now, at least not assigned to uh, to industry, to production, which is this one. Oh, we don't need nearly that much supplies, reinforcements or upgrades, so now we've got substantially more. We don't need nearly that many on consumer goods. You should go just over on consumer goods. So this is how you assign your industrial capacity. These are the six things you can use it for. We're not going to do any lend leases, so let's not worry about that. Producing supplies, which is this thing. Uh, we should build a surplus of supplies. Uh, which obviously are used to give the guns, bullets, and all that good stuff to your troops as they need it. There's reinforcement, which is for replacing uh, damaged stuff in divisions, or building up to when you mobilize your units, they need to reinforce a whole bunch. Upgrades for applying new technology you've got to your existing units. So, we could start straight out the gate. You know what? We don't think we have enough industrial capacity. So we could start building even more industrial capacity, and we are going to do that. Because <laughs> I'm mad. Let's build industrial capacity, at least three of them. Ten in series, which means they build one, and then another, and then another ten times. Uh, good. Now, we are going to need an air force at some point, so I think we'll start building it early. Let's do tank bombers and interceptors. No, I did that wrong. Uh, I want to do them in series rather than in parallel. And the advantage of doing things in series is they uh, each one will be cheaper because... Uh, did I do that right? Yeah, attacking it. That is good. Each one will be cheaper than the last because each time you build one, you're gaining practical experience. Sorry, uh, theoretical experience, which means you then uh, build the next one faster. So it's good to build, it's good to build things in parallel where possible because you build them much faster that way. We should just finish these two destroyers and the Yorktown. Sorry, and the, the Enterprise and the Yorktown, really. Uh, do we have spare? It seems like we have spare CAGs. Like, I can't rebase. It doesn't seem like I can rebase them to the carrier right now. Uh, yeah. Not sure about that. Oh, no! I hit the 
freaking Windows key. <laughs> Darn it. Unfortunately, it takes like uh, 15 seconds to get back into Hearts of Iron 3 after tabbing out or hitting the Windows key or anything like that, which is frustrating, but oh well. <sighs> right. Um, what else do we need to do right now? I think just setting up some production lines of infantry and tanks uh, would be advisable. Let's let a tiny bit of time pass. Uh, more research is still possible. We should we should fix that. Yeah. So so I think some yeah mechanical engineering would be good. We definitely need all these because they're very valuable technologies. Uh, aeronautical engineering decay. Sure. Artillery. Sure. Infantry. Because as I'm sure you can probably tell from this, it just ticks down over time slowly. Your uh, your practical sorry your theoretical experience does. I uh, probably your your practical as well. Now I now I mention it. Uh, there are 17 possible, and we're not going to need this much on espionage and diplomacy. Not even close, probably. Okay. We could start on better naval doctrine. That seems valuable to me. Sure. I think... Well, CL. Let's light cruiser. We are going to build those in the end. Obviously, carrier cruiser is better. Sortie organization penalty. Sortie is when your planes go out from your carrier. Uh, we need radar to get radar detection. Okay, we should start working on... Well, radar is 39. I think we'll start on that a bit later. Okay, so now we have... I don't feel bad about unpausing just for a second. More efficient laws can be enacted. We don't have the cash for it now. It takes a little bit of cash to change laws. Not much, just like 200 or something. Ah, good point. Uh, diplomacy. Automate trade. I don't understand it. And this is not the campaign where we learn to understand trade. Uh, speed things up. Keep things going here. So, what was I waiting for? Yes, I was waiting for it to recalculate how much we were actually using on the on this side, which it looks like it does on the daily tick. So we are still massively underusing. We've got another 30 free industrial capacity that we want to use up. Right, and I also wanted to see if those CAGs rebased onto the thing. It doesn't look like it. So these can have... How do I see how many planes you can carry? Do, 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 do. Transport capacity, zero. Okay, it's not that. Carrier CAG size, two. And are you... How big are you? Are you two on your own? Do, 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 do. Strength, experience. Dum, dum, dum. So they don't have all this tech that we could get them, so we can work on that. Transcore plus D zero. I don't see... I mean, I, you would have thought that's one, right? If there's no other indicator to the country, so... Uh, there we go. Rebase a carrier. I'm sorry, I just missed it. Okay, good. So we do need... Two CAGs per one of these carriers. So we do need to let these CAGs finish as well. Let's put the planes below the CAGs. And then let's start building some infantry. Infantry is real cheap as reserves. I think we're going to do five in parallel. Uh, which is one uh, core. Uh, you organize your armies into divisions, corps, armies, army groups, theatres. And we'll get into that a bit more once we actually start getting some deployed. So here, do 15 in parallel. No, do more. Do 20 in parallel. That'll take you essentially forever. And I think we're going to use this as the basic infantry template that we're going to fight with. Uh, in South America, we're going to want some mountaineers, I think. So let's instead of this National Guard division, the National Guard are henceforth now known as the mountaineers. Now, the question becomes, do we want to take... Uh, do we want to take artillery up into the mountains? So right now, in mountains, they have plus 10 attack, plus 30 defense, plus 10 movement. If we add in artillery, they now have minus 10 attack, so 20% attack swing. But then if we compare their actual soft attack, it's much more than 20% higher when we have that artillery. Plus we get the combined arms bonus. So I think we probably do still want engine, uh, artillery on our our mountaineers. Maybe we should go with some engineers. I think engineers give bonuses in the mountains. It looks like they're even worse. Okay, engineers are even worse than the mountains apparently, but we do get that extra combined arms bonus, so I'm conflicted. I think also for fighting in South America, maybe we should go with some narrower divisions, like this. Just two combat width. Hmm. What are rangers? I think rangers are just elite infantry. Let's look at some stat comparisons. The same, the same, the same, the same, the same, the same. 
The same, the same. They're exactly the freaking same. They have more officers. They cost more. They use more manpower and they take longer. But they're identical on all stats, apart from officer numbers. But I don't think officer numbers help. <laughs> I mean, more officers just makes it a more expensive division. That's interesting. Oh, no, here's the difference. They have 10 more organization. Okay, that's a big difference. 25% buffed organization is a big deal. Okay. Let's not worry about mountaineers right now. We'll start with... Uh, although I would like to build the division. So, yeah, we'll go with uh, mountain, mountain artillery. So, it's narrower, so it uses less supply. How much less supplies actually use? Quite a bit less. Ah, oh, it's anti-tank. Whoops. No, there's no infantry. It uses 2.3 or 3. No. 2 point... Good lord. Artillery. Okay. 2.3 or... Yeah, 3. Oh, it's just putting them in the wrong place. That's why I was getting confused. Okay. Direct fire? What is direct fire if not artillery? Tank destroyer, anti-aircraft, and anti-tank. Okay. Because I guess the artillery is... You're firing up in the air and it's crashing down, whereas these are just going straight along directly. That makes sense. Uh, cool. I don't think I want to build any of these right now, but let's save it. Cavalry, we're going to use these for military police, so we'll leave those. Armor, 1940. We can't build these yet because we haven't invented medium armor. So, uh, take those out. Still can't build this. Why not? Have I not invented motorized? That seems bad. <laughs> uh, maybe you need armored car tech to build motorized? I thought motorized were over here. Yeah, there we go. We haven't invented motorized yet because we need, oh god, we need more cav tech to actually invent motorized. We need to invent motorized. Okay, we're definitely not going to build any. Uh, let's bump those to the top of the list. They're important. Uh, we can't actually build any motorized right now. Okay, so we won't worry about that. We will instead build. Start building some more carriers, some more battleships. Oh, some transports. We actually have zero transports. I completely forgot. We're going to want some of those. Uh, let's just build one in parallel. Or two for a bit. That's fine. I'm putting far more lines in uh, like this than I actually need. We can just delete them afterwards. That seems fine. Okay. Uh, more efficient laws. We do want specialist training. It's going to cost 236. As you can see. So what's the thing that's making it so terrible on our economy right now? So it's the full civilian economy is the big thing we want to get rid of soon. So, which gives you more money, but 50% less industrial capacity. So we can only do this when you need to get neutrality below 70 and unities at least 60. Well, that's doable. We're trying to deploy already? Wow. Oh, right, there's new destroyers. We are shocked to inform you that the full from National China have cancelled our trade agreement. We do not need that to pop up, but thank you for informing me. So I'll add that uh, destroyer in here. He is now commanding too few ships. I don't understand the disadvantage of promoting him, which means he can command more ships. If you know, do tell me. We're wasting industrial capacity on supply production. It's not a waste. We need to produce extra supplies. Still thinks we're wasting it on... Oh, we're actually under-producing. Okay, so we need some more stuff to produce. Um... I could throw in more industrial capacity. Just build stupid amounts of industrial capacity. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's have two more... Two more great big lines of industrial capacity. Uh, I don't know... Yes, like I know. Like I said a few times. <laughs> I don't know the balancing of this game. Nearly as well. The United Kingdom is influencing us towards their faction, but we can ignore that. Uh, is advanced training the only bit more efficient law we can do? Yes. Sorry, specialist training. Let's do that. Cool. Okay, well, with uh, less than a month ticked past, I'm going to call that the end of the first part. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you have any feedback, I'm sure I'm doing things horrendously badly, <laughs> given that I'm not by any means an expert this game. Do tell me in the comments all the many things I'm screwing up and dooming myself to total failure. <laughs> but if you're more positive, you know, tell me you like the series or that kind of thing. Anyway, I'll stop plugging the comments. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.